Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on exporting 3D mapping data from OpenStreetMaps and importing this data into Rhino. For this tutorial we'll be using OpenStreetMap which is an online free map of the world for which we can download 2D and 3D data from. We'll also be using this program called osm to world which allows us to extract 3D data from OpenStreetMaps and to make sure this program works correctly we have to make sure we have Java installed and Java is a programming language that just allows this OSM to world program to work so in order for this program to work we need to make sure we have Java installed on our machines now I'll put links to each of these pieces of software in the video so you can find them and download them for this tutorial now to start we're just going to select a site in London and I'm going to select this Lambeth Bridge site and we're going to download the OpenStreetMap data to our computer and to do that we just go to export at the top of the page and hit this export button here and it will download an OpenStreetMap file and just call map for now and that will just go into our downloads folder. Now with that downloaded we then need to open up our OSM to world program. Now you can download this from their website and make sure you download the most recent numbered version, so this one here, rather than the latest build because you'll find that the latest build might have a few bugs in the program and won't be as stable as this most recent numbered version. So make sure you download that and also make sure you have Java installed so it can work on your machine. Now with that program installed we can open up the folder which it comes in and in that folder you'll find this OMS to world file and it will be called an executable jar file which stands for an executable Java file which is why we need the Java program to use it and with that we can just double click to open that program up that will open up this small window and then we need to locate our map file we've downloaded so we go file open OSM file we locate that OSM file which will just be in our downloads folder map 5 and it will import that data in and convert it into 3D model data which you can see here now we're not actually going to do anything within this OMS to world viewer we're actually going to immediately export this out so I'm just going to go file and export OBJ file to take that 3D data and export it as a file that we can then load into our CAD software. And I'm just going to save that onto my desktop, like so. And that's just saving out that file now as an OBJ, which stands for an object file, which you can then load into Rhino. That file is now saved, so I'm now going to open up my Rhino file. We're going to go to File, Import, or Locate, that file we've saved, the Lambeth site, and hit open. And then on the import options, I'm not going to change any of the options, and we're just going to go OK. And that will then load that OBJ file into our Rhino model. Now, what you may find is if I open up the perspective window here, and it comes in kind of rotated 90 degrees. And this sometimes happens with OBJ files because they're mapped in a slightly different way to Rhino's native way of producing 3D models. So you just need to rotate it by 90 degrees when it comes in, just so it's at the right angle. And then I'm just going to move this up a little bit. So this is our 3D model that's come in. You may find that they've got some bits, like the bottom of the bridges here, that might be slightly kind of different to how the model should be and with these extra pieces I usually just select and delete these here if you don't need them. You'll also notice that all the objects have come in on this default layer. If I turn that off that will hide. So much like with the 2D file we'll need to split this model up into its kind of separate object layers using the color selection tool. But before we do that the first thing we need to do when we bring this file in is the file type that it comes in as is a mesh format and you can see that by if we select any of these planes here look at the top left it would say one mesh at its selection now within Rhino natively Rhino uses a NURBS format of modeling so with meshes you won't be able to kind of turn this into a 2D drawing unless we convert these meshes 
to a NURBS or a Rhino object. Now to do that, we just go and select all the geometry like so. And then if you type in mesh to NURB, it will convert this mesh object to a NURB format, which is Rhino's kind of native 3D modeling format. So we'll just go mesh to NURB and it usually takes a little bit of time just to convert those meshes into a NURB format. That process is now com being complete and what you'll find is that the mesh will still be there but in the same place as the mesh will also be a poly surface. So what we can do then is delete all the meshes from our scene and to do that we can type in select mesh or cell mesh hit enter and that will select all the mesh objects and then we can hit delete and we'll be left with the same model but all of these surfaces will be poly surfaces which is Rhino's kind of native format or these are called a NURBS format as well which we'll be able to make into 2D drawings from this point. So the next part once we've converted our meshes into NURBS is we need to check the scale of these objects. Now usually I'll sort of take a building here and just check the rough size of that building. So let's find, say, the end of this kind of curly building here. I'm just going to measure side to side and we're going to just look down at our measurement here. Um, you'll see at the moment that's coming out as 17.89 millimeters, which for a building is obviously way too small, but it might be that it's kind of scaled by a factor of a thousand and that's actually kind of 17.89 meters. But what I'm going to do is we're going to open up Google Maps and we're going to check this just using Google Maps measure function. So I've located the site on Google Maps and this seems to be the end of that building there. So we're going to right click on this corner of the building, select measure distance on Google and then we'll click on the next corner and give us a length and that's 17.9 meters. So much like I guessed in the model, it looks like our model is scaled by a factor of a thousand too small. So we need to scale it up by a thousand so it reaches the exact scale. So I'm just going to either click and drag over to select all the objects. Here we're going to select scale 3D there, select any point on the model and then just type in 1000 for the scale factor and that will scale up my model by a factor of a thousand. So instead of being 17 millimeters, that will now be 17 meters or 17,000 millimeters in this case. And we can use the zoom selected tool just to zoom back out to our model. And we'll just check again the length of that building. So this building here. And we'll use the line tool again just to measure from one point to the next. You see that's now 17,000 millimeters. So we know that's now at roughly the right scale. So then the whole model now should be at the correct scale. From there, we can then split up the objects onto the correct layers. And to do that, I'll use the select color tool again. So just select the edge of the building, type in select color, and it will select all the buildings of that matching color. And we can then make a new layer, call this buildings. And under the properties tab, we can change the layer of these objects from default to, ah, it didn't correctly change there, but it was to layer six there, which is my buildings layer. And make sure that all these features are set to by layer and you can see it will change color to match the layer when that's happened. So if we then go back to our layer six, I'm gonna actually call this buildings. And, set, and we can change the color too, so we can check that they're on the right layer. And there you go. And I just go and do that to each of the objects in this file. So they're each on their own layer. So it's very easy and clear to see which of the kind of objects you can select and then you can turn them on and off whenever you need them. So that was just a quick video tutorial on downloading and importing 3D data from OpenStreetMaps into Rhino and formatting and scaling up that data to use within your projects. Thank you for watching.